Welcome to How We Do House Church, the official podcast of Reformation Seminary and the Reformation Fellowship Network of Church Planters. My name is Dr. Jason Barker, and I serve as the academic dean at Reformation Seminary. And I'm joined by my friend and our founder and president, Dale Partridge. Dale, you ready to talk some house church today? Yeah. And I think we're going to hit this topic of really the practicality of how do you get a house church going? Where does it start? When does it start? How does it start? And I think that's a common question that a lot of people are asking. Yeah, absolutely. It is one of the ones that we get most often. How do I get started? So Dale, how do we start a biblical house church? So I would say you start it the same way that you would start any other church. Uh, You want to be ideally trained. Uh, I'm I'm even going to back up a little bit further. You want to be called, you want to be qualified, and you want to be trained. And so uh, we need to make sure that these men who are called, truly are called to, to plant, to pastor, and to preach. And the criteria is no less than it would be if you were to plant a traditional church. Uh, you have to be qualified, according to First Timothy three and Titus one, that you are uh, to oversight or to be able to oversee faithfully a congregation and an assembly of God's people, um, and that you are uh, trained. You've been theologically trained. You're not a new believer. You are able to uh, correct false doctrine. You are able to know what true doctrine is. You can preach the word of God faithfully. All of these things are essential to really start this discussion about how do I start a house church? The the second thing that is essential is that it's the same as you would do any church plant out of a traditional church. You need to be sent. Uh, You should be sent from another local church or an ordaining body. And so the way that you could do that uh, and the way that we've done that is that we would, uh, for the graduates of Reformation Seminary, those men that are qualified. And we do a pretty significant check on these individuals after knowing them for a year, after seeing their theological work, after meeting their families and meeting their children and having a discussion with them and talking to the references and clarifying their calling and understanding their doctrinal convictions. We would ordain these individuals from the Reformation Fellowship Network of house churches, uh, which is really kind of an outflowing of our local church here in Cottonwood, Arizona, and has continued on to other house church gatherings around the country, we would ordain these individuals to gospel ministry or to church planting ministry. Now, there's a lot more involved in just, you know, it's not just being called, being qualified, and being trained, and then being sent. That That's for sure the, the basics. But there's also a lot of uh, you know, nitty gritty in the middle of all this that you have to uh, have discussions with your family and have discussions with your your friends and 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 have those individuals that are going to go on that journey with you. Uh, if you go to any church plant out of a traditional church, you're going to see lots of planning, lots of preparing, lots of discussions around getting other families who are committed to going on this journey with you. Uh, making sure that you have families that are committed to showing up every Sunday, Um, identifying those, what we call a four core, your four core individual families that are committed to showing up every Sunday, no matter what, uh, rain or shine, unless they're sick or out of town, they are there with you so that you can establish that core group of mature families. One thing we've learned in planting is that, uh, for house churches specifically, is visitors or guests or new members will assimilate to the culture that exists already. And so what you want to do is you want to have a strong culture of biblical families that are mature, that really establish sound doctrine culture, Christian culture, biblical culture in that house church, so that when new families come, they assimilate to what's already there versus uh, having a situation where you only have one mature family and you have lots of guests and members that are maybe new to the faith, uh, new converts, or maybe immature in their faith. And it becomes very difficult to shepherd those individuals towards sound doctrine. It takes a lot longer. And so there's a lot of things to think about there and the practicalities of getting a house church planted. But those those are some of the starting points. One of the things that sticks out to me in everything you mentioned is 
it, it's the importance of doing a house church plant within the broader context of a community. You're, you're, we're not wanting men to go out and launch this completely on their own. I, I think one of the challenges we find in churches today, uh, let's just step all the way back to the topic of calling. Yep. Um, in many churches today, uh, you basically, you inform the church that you've been called to ministry and then they ordain you. Mm-hmm. Um, that That's a little backwards of yes. how it should be, right? And so it, it this kind of helps avoid some of the, the rogue mentality. And let's be honest, uh, house church planters are, are entrepreneurial, aren't they? They are. Uh, by nature. And so there is, there is somewhat... Uh, to a degree that the training, the network, the community kind of reigns some of that in and channels everything maybe more so in the right direction. Yeah. And I think a point that you made there is uh, two points. One is that we have found that maybe 80% of our house church planters are self-employed. Yes. Th- yeah, there's just yeah. an interesting correlation there. We also have a handful of police officers. <laughs> so uh, there, there's just a range of people there. But we have seen a thread of having that there's a missionary mentality that comes from that entrepreneurial spirit. There's kind of a a kin relationship there. And another thing that you mentioned there about um, calling is we want, we want individuals to tell us, it looks like you're called to ministry. We want people to recognize that gifting, that spiritual calling in us uh, we don't want to just identify it on our own and go, I'm called and I'm going. And, right. and so we want to have that affirmation of the body and through proven faithfulness in the local church that you're in. And so we also want, and th- one thing I want to say is that for individuals that you know go through Reformation Seminary, they're part of a traditional church. I mean, we, these are men and families that are currently part of traditional churches that love the traditional church, but are looking to offer an alternative expression uh, for the, the assembling of God's people. And so we've had several churches who have sent off a house church from their traditional church. Right. And that's how it should be in the sense of, uh, there shouldn't be some sort of we're leaving this terrible traditional church so that we can do it right. That that's not the posture. Right. We want to have the posture of uh, we're going to be sent off, and ideally, you'd have a pastor who was supportive and saying, "We want to announce to the ch- to the church if there's any families here that feel called to go with you, and and if they can't spare three or four families uh, to go with you." Um, you know, especially if they're a larger church, that, that's, that's kind of a bad sign. Sure. Uh, and so, yeah, so I think it's a good thing. We want to be sent off. Uh, and I know the last thing is we want to be a part of a community of other house churches. Yeah. Let, let's talk about that for just a minute. I, I know we're probably limited on time here. So maybe 45 seconds or so on the importance of Reformation Fellowship, the church planting network. What does it do and how does it help? Yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this in 45 seconds. So we'll just keep 47. Going. Okay, fine. there we go. Yeah. So the uh, <laughs> Reformation Fellowship is a network, an international network of house churches. It's not a denomination; it's an association, and it's where all of our graduates that plant house churches they plant churches in the Reformation Fellowship. It's a it's a fellowship of uh, reformed biblical house churches, and we are confessional. We, we uh, abide by the 1689 substantial affirmation of the 1689 uh, Baptist Confession of Faith. Uh, we also uh, affirm and allow uh, the Presbyterians to go under the Westminster Confession to be a part of the network. But this is a network of house churches where men can establish a house church, be sent off from the network, be accountable to the network, have what this does is it allows guests to feel comfortable and safe that they're in a church with biblically qualified elders who have been trained, who have been ordained, who are in good standing, who affirm this, the 1689 statement of faith and are maintaining that good standing, that good relationship with the network. And then for the church planter, it allows ongoing education, relationship with other church planters around the country and around the world, um, and support, pastoral support for those 
who are walking in a similar calling. And it also allows them to be found on reformationfellowship.org through our church finder. Uh, We provide different resources and tools. We want those churches to be healthy, thriving, fruitful churches. And so we're working on establishing that network. There's no fee to be a part of it. It's, It's a pure ministry out of Reformation Seminary. But it's our hope to really pioneer and legitimize house church, biblical house church, as a valid alternative for Christians to gather. Yeah. So it kind of sounds like one of the main takeaways here for somebody asking, how do I plant a biblical house church is to understand that it is number one, it's it's not insurmountable. It's not this huge task that absolutely cannot be done and takes just more than you have. But at the same time, it's also not without standards. There, there, there are some uh, standards, some methods, some practices, and certainly some doctrinal beliefs that are that are an essential part of doing that well. And so I think this really also speaks to the importance of being trained. And that's really what we're trying to accomplish at Reformation Seminary. Yeah, it's not a fly-by-night operation, which we think is that people go, I'm just going to start a house church because we have a good small group right now. We're just going to turn into house church and we're just going to kind of start meeting on Sunday mornings. And that is what it is. That's not the right posture. A house church plant is just as complex uh, as a traditional church plant on the training level, but it's not uh, complex on the financial level. Right. It's it's not complex on the staff and human resources levels, but on the training, on the calling, on the preparation for the reverential work of ministry, we need to take the same amount of of diligence to prepare ourselves to do this faithfully. And uh, so, yeah, it's if you've planted a traditional church, it's it's way less work because it's much smaller. But it's there's no less degree of seriousness and required prayer and and required uh, discussions with those families and um, and so it is a a a, a slightly lower bar to entry mm-hmm. uh, for I- individuals that might go. I, I feel called to ministry, but. I don't want to maybe do the the traditional church with the big building and all that stuff, you know, quit my job. And so this is a, a great way for those individuals who feel called to ministry to do so, to carry out that calling uh, without really stepping in to a, an absolute substantial change in their life. Right. So it's possible that you've tuned into the podcast uh, and and maybe you're in one of two places. The first place, maybe you just have more questions about house church, and you'd like to find a way to get some more information about that and and study it a little bit more, Uh, your best next step would be to pick up a copy of Dale's book, How We Do House Church. Uh, It's available on Amazon. You can also purchase it uh, through the Relearn store. If you purchase it through the Relearn store, there actually a little bit more money goes to the ministry. So we'd love it if you you took the opportunity to do that. Uh, It could be that that you're in a position where, Dale, I feel like I'm I'm giving an invitation here at the end of a worship service or something, and it's time for you to come make your commitment. That's how it feels. But it could be today that you're in a place where you're ready to uh, actually pursue training, formal training, Uh, for house church planting. If that's the case, we want you to take the opportunity to fill out an enrollment inquiry at reformationseminary.com. That's that's a great next step. We'd love to dialogue with you more about that and and get that ball rolling. So Dale, any last thoughts before we wrap up? No, just excited uh, to have anybody that feels called to house church ministry. We need faithful men to step up. We have hundreds of people per year that write us do you have a house church in this town? Do you have a house church in that town? Do you have a house church here where I live? And more often than not, we have to say no. Yeah. So we need you men to step up if you're if you feel called and you feel qualified and you want to be trained. We're here for you. So that's it, folks. Thanks for checking out this episode of How We Do House Church. Just as a reminder, these shows are available in both podcast uh, and video format across all platforms. So we hope you'll have the chance to continue to uh, tune in and then pass these along to friends as well. We'll see you guys next time.